Greetings, everybody. This is an older study, but it fits right in with Judah's scepter and Joseph's birthright. So I'm doing this as an intro so the um, tube doesn't uh, kill a, the study as a duplicate, I guess you could say. So, all right, well, keep listening and uh, hope you enjoy. This is going to be on Why God Hated Esau. Esau, eat him. Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. I was going to do another Bible study, but I kind of felt like, I don't know, maybe the, the Lord laid it upon my heart to do a study on Esau, who is also known as Edom. Do you know that the Bible declares, the King James Bible declares, that God hated Esau? I mean, can you believe that? I mean, in John 3.16 it said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. But yet the Bible declares that God hated Esau. This is something that most of the churches just absolutely positively cannot handle. And that's why they always discourage Christians from reading the Old Testament, because when they read the Old Testament, they come across verses like this, um, and they start asking the questions, you know, it's, they can't answer it. Well, they won't answer it, because they try to cover all this stuff up. You know, they, they always like to say, well, God loves everybody. And then they'll quote you John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But then they leave out, and I hated Esau. All right, so let's take a look at Genesis 25. We covered, my last Bible study I did was on election, and I covered this somewhat, but this is a pretty important Bible study if you really want to understand the Bible. Um, it's not something that I find comforting, but it's important to know your enemy. Now, something you've got to understand about the Bible the Bible is the book of Adam's children. And then God made a choice with Abraham. Abraham had two children, Ishmael and Isaac. And then God chose Isaac. And then Isaac had two children, Esau and Jacob. And God rejected Esau and chose Jacob. And Jacob became, God changed, changed Jacob's name to Israel. And then Israel had 12 sons and some daughters, at least one daughter. And uh, I think her name was Dinah. He might have had more, but I, I don't remember. Um, but I know that the 12 children the 12 sons of Jacob became known as the 12 tribes of Israel. But yet God rejected Esau. And the church world just absolutely freaks out about this. They're like, oh no, God wouldn't do that. Well, you ought to read, your, you ought to read the Bible instead of listening to preachers. So let's do that. Go to Genesis 25.25. Well, actually, let's go to Genesis 25, 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Now remember, Isaac was Abraham's son, the chosen son. And if you don't believe that, go look at uh, election. The Bible teaches it. Uh, it's the study that I did before this one. 
And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. And the children struggled together within her, and she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Basically, in modern English, this is like, Lord, what in the world is going on in my belly? Verse 23. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red, all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Now, just a note real quick here. Uh, you got people running around calling themselves the Black Hebrews. They're of African descent. And they're claiming that Esau was the first white man. And uh, they're claiming that Esau is, you know, child of the devil and blah, blah, blah. And white people are children of the devil and they need to be killed. Um, and the Nation of Islam, Louis Farrakhan, they believe something along the same lines. So, uh, know your enemy. I mean, you know. I don't hate anybody because of the color of their skin, but you know this, that the Lord has enemies, all right? But the thing is, if, when you got twins, uh, what's what's the likeliness that one's going to be white and one's going to be black? Uh, not very likely, right? And if you don't believe me, call your local college geneticist, somebody that's into genetics at a college with a doctorate degree and ask them. All right, so, so Esau came out red and first. Now, why would Esau be red colored, covered with red? I mean, is this saying that Esau came out red because of the white skin that showed blood? You know, or was he Indian? Or did he have red hair? Just something to think about. Okay, I don't think he was an Indian. The Mormons believe that, that uh, the chosen people are the Indians. But, uh, you know, what do you want from Joseph Smith that uh, got his knowledge from an angel called Moron I, M-O-R-O-N-I. Anybody that would listen to an, an angel whose name is Moron I is a moron, if you ask me. But All right, so let's go to verse... Um, all right, 25, and, and the first came out red all over like an hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was threescore years old when she bare them. And the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man dwelling in tents. And Isaac, Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob. And Jacob sawed pottage. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. In other words, you know, he's hungry. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. So Esau, E-S-A-U, and Edom, E-D-O-M, are synonymous. Verse 31. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Now I covered this on my last Bible study, but the birthright was a gift from God. The firstborn son was to get a double portion of the inheritance. So if you had three cows... And two sons, the firstborn son would get two of the cows, and the secondborn son would get one. 
But the birthright was not only a privilege and a gift, it was also a responsibility because the firstborn son was responsible for taking care of the mother and father. That's why he was to be given a double portion. That was his, um, I guess, his payment for taking care of mom and dad instead of running off to college to become a doctor or a lawyer. Okay. So here it is. Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. See, Jacob knew Esau had the birthright because he was the oldest son. Even though they were twins, he was born probably, you know, maybe five, ten minutes apart. I don't know. Doesn't matter. He was the firstborn. He came out first. He got the double portion. Verse 32. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die. Oh, I'm hungry and I'm going to die because I haven't eaten since breakfast. And here it is evening, and I'm starving to death. Oh, I'm sorry. That's Bob's paraphrase. And Esau said, Behold, I'm at the point to die, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? In other words, I'm hungry. What good is this lousy, stinking, good-for-nothing birthright? What good is it? See, the Bible says that the birthright was a gift from God. And Esau didn't like it. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day, and he swore unto him, and he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. In other words, Esau hated God's gift to him for being the firstborn. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine God goes, gives you a gift, and you hate the gift? I mean, think about it, people. Suppose ladies will get on, get on this, right? Suppose you ladies, uh, I don't know how many of you knit or make clothes, but suppose you went out and, and bought the finest fabric that you could afford and you found out uh, you were making a piece of clothing or a coat or something for somebody and you used the finest fabric and you found out their favorite color and their favorite style and, you know, you spent 20, 30 hours putting this coat together or whatever. And then it comes time for Christmas and you present them this, you know, your whatever, let's say a niece or something or a nephew and a gift and you give it to them. And they open up the gift and they look at it and they says, oh, I hate this. This is garbage. I, I, I don't want this trash. And they wad it up and throw it in the corner. Um, how would you feel? You know, how would you feel? Oh, I don't want this trashy gift you gave me. You know, I don't want it. It's garbage. When would be the next time that you would make a, a gift for this person? Uh, never. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Turn your Bibles to Je uh, Deuteronomy 21, 15. Now, people have used this as an excuse to have more than one wife. And that was not the purpose. The Lord didn't encourage people to have two wives, but it was a common practice back in the old days. Okay? The reason the Lord did this was to provide protection for the first wife. You know, the thing was, is if a man was very successful, um, you know, he had a wife when he was young, and she was pretty, and you had a son, and then, you know, 20, 20-something 20 years, 25 years later, you know, he's middle-aged, and, you know, you have a couple of kids, uh, 
and you're 45 years old, you know, you don't look, a woman, your wife's not going to look as hot as, and nice as a, you know, a 20 year old, 21, you know, 21 year old girl. So, you know, sadly, men tend to view and uh, pick women on the basis of how they look. And women can be just as shallow and pick a man by the size of his bank account. So when you got a man that's picking a woman because, uh, based on her looks and a woman base, uh, picking a man based upon his money, that's not exactly a match made in heaven, if you ask me. And uh, so, you know, if a man got married when he was young, had a wife, is now middle-aged, and his wife's middle-aged, and her breasts are sagging, and her thighs have gotten a little few pounds extra, you know, and then he sees this nice, hot-looking 23-year-old, and he decides, hmm, I want a second wife. I want a, you know, that hot one over there. So he marries a second wife. Okay, this is what it's talking about. All right, Deuteronomy 21:15. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that is that was hated, then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. Okay? So, if your original wife had the firstborn son, even though you don't care about her anymore, and you got this hot-looking young thing over here that's really gorgeous looking and you're all hot and bothered with her okay you can't take the second born son and try to make him the first born son as far as the inheritance goes all right then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. But he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he hath. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Okay, see, I'm not making this stuff up, people. I've spent a lot of time in the Bible, and I'm not saying I know it all. I don't. Boy, there's a lot more stuff in the Bible I don't know than I know. Um, ask me about the book of Daniel. I'll tell you flat out. I, shoo. Shoo. I don't, I don't understand Daniel. That, that's a hard book. Daniel didn't even understand Daniel. He said there were parts of it, and he, he'd asked, and Lord... Lord, or the angel told him to shut it up and would be understood until the end times. So, so here it is. Esau was the firstborn. He was supposed to get a double portion. And he didn't even care. He didn't even want God's gift. So he sold it for a bowl of beans, and a piece of bread. Remember that sweater you made for the your niece or nephew? And they watered it up and threw it on the ground in the corner? Yeah, that's what Esau did to the Lord. Now, I want to prove a point here. In Genesis 32.3, we read, And Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau his brother unto the land of Seir, S-E-I-R, the country of Edom. Genesis 36, 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. 
and you know that's they became the Edomites. Genesis 36 8 thus dwell Esau in Mount Seir Esau is Edom Genesis 36 19 these are the sons of Esau who is Edom and these are their dukes um, Genesis 36 43 Duke Magdal Duke Iram these be the dukes of Edom according to their habitations in the land of their possession he is Esau the father of the Edomites oh boy Obadiah 1 8 Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau? That doesn't sound good, does it? All right. Um, I'm going to get into something a little controversial here, but everything that is true Bible truth nowadays is controversial if you believe that god created the heavens and the earth in six days instead of believing evolution in millions and millions of years that's controversial if you believe that jonah was swallowed by a whale and was in the whale's belly for three days and three nights that's controversial Now, the thing is, Esau married into the line of the Canaanites. And you got to realize something. The Bible is the book of Adam, the book of Abraham, the book of Isaac, the book of Jacob. It's not the book of Ishmael. He's mentioned the Bible's not the book of Esau. He's mentioned. The Bible isn't the book of Satan and his angels. They're mentioned. You know, the Bible isn't the book of Michael and Gabriel, but they're mentioned. Okay? The Bible is the book of Abraham's, Adam, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob's children. Who became Israel and of course Christ who was also of the seed of Adam of Abraham Isaac Jacob King David okay now in Genesis 6 I have a playlist called the angels that sinned it was written by a man that founded the Denver Christian Bible College uh, the guy was a real Bible scholar. It's a four-hour study, but it proves without a doubt that in Genesis 6, the angels intermarried with the women, and they had giants. And if you'll study carefully, you'll see that the Philistines, the giants that happened after the flood, are tied in with the families of the Canaanites. Okay, the Canaanites, God absolutely, positively forbid Israel to intermarry with them. And your modern Bible uh, teachers turn it into a fairy tale. Well, you know, they were wicked. So that's why the Lord said, don't marry them. Well, yeah, they were wicked, all right. But their bloodline was polluted. You know, the Bible says that in Genesis 6 that Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. The Canaanites were more than just wicked people. They were completely, utterly ruined. Uh, you know, it's, please see the playlist if you want to. To learn more about that that's why the Lord said to Israel when they went into the land of Canaan 
to exterminate, to kill everything that breatheth, to kill all the Canaanites. It said, don't intermarry with them. And we're going to go into that a little bit. Because guess what? Guess who Esau married? Yep, you guessed it. The Edomites married the Canaanites. Esau destroyed his bloodline. Even though Esau was a grandchild of Abraham, God's friend, he absolutely destroyed his lineage, his children, his seed, absolutely destroyed them. So let's take a look real quick at what the Bible says about the Canaanites and, and about not marrying them. Let's take a look real quick. And then if you want to, you can do a four-hour study on um, the angels that sinned in Genesis 6 and on the flood after that. Remember when Goliath faced David? That was well after the flood, people. So, all right, let's take a look at the Canaanites real quick. If you turn to Zechariah 14.21, listen to this carefully. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Personally, I believe this is going to be the millennial reign of Christ. And um, during the thousand years millennium, I it is my understanding there will be a, a sacrifices still, but this is my little pet theory. I'm not saying I'm right, but uh, personally, I believe that every child, every child that was aborted, every, well, b baby that was aborted or died stillborn, of course, I believe they're with the Lord. But I do believe, my opinion, that they're going to be given a new body during the millennium and be allowed to grow up. Because believers are not going to have children. It says that uh, in the resurrection, they neither married nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels in heaven. But yet in the millennium, um, the Bible talks about the child playing at the hole of the snake, the asp, and the snake doesn't hurt it. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. You know, so if believers are not having children, where do these children come from? You know, that's just my opinion. I, you know, I'm not saying I'm right. And if somebody disagrees with me, that's fine. You know, but I'm just saying, I, I believe those children that grow up, those will be the ones doing the sacrifices in the millennial kingdom. All right, so. All right, so let's take a look. Um. In Genesis 24, 3, we read, And I will make thee swear by the Lord, the God of heaven and the God of the earth, that thou shalt not, thou shalt not take a wife unto my son of the daughters of the Canaanites among whom I dwell. Am I, uh, 24, 37, Genesis 24, 37. And my master made me swear, saying, I believe this was Abraham had his servant um, get a wife for Isaac, who was Rebekah. And my master made me swear, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. You know, and I've had people tell me, well, you know, the Lord changed his mind in the New Testament. Uh, I don't think so. You know. You know, there's a reason why the Lord put the lineage, the genealogy in the Bible, you know, 
And Adam begat Seth, you know, and Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the 12 patriarchs, you know. And people will say, well, you know, the Bible says not, not for endless genealogies. Well, yeah, the genealogies are not supposed to be endless. But the reason the genealogies were put in there was to show that the bloodlines were pure. Why do you think Christ's bloodline, when you read his genealogy, it goes all it goes all the way back to King David, back to um, Jacob Israel, back to Isaac, back to Abraham, all the way back to Adam. And there's a reason for that, people. I mean, God's just, you know, like, well, you know, I got to put some words in the Bible here. I got to fill it up. He's not just doing that. Those genealogies were in the Bible for good reason. Every word in this Bible is in there for a good reason. But the, the, some of the stupid Jews were arguing in uh, the Apostles' day that, well, I'm of Judah, and I'm of Levi, and I'm of Reuben, and I'm of Simeon, and I'm of Dan. You know, they were arguing over which tribe was better. That's what they meant by endless genealogies. So, all right, so let's keep going here. Let's read some more things about the Canaanites. All right, turn to Numbers 21, verse 3. Listen to this. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And they utterly destroyed them and their cities, and he called the name of the place Hormoth. All right. They utterly destroyed the Canaanites in that particular instance. The Lord, the Lord's giving instructions to Israel here. Deuteronomy 2017. Now, this is the thing. Um, people that claim to be atheists use these verses to claim that God is a homicidal maniac, an evil, wicked bastard. I'm using their terminology. And the reason being is because of these verses. Because what they do is they, they show that God said to wipe these people out, but yet they don't understand these people were hybrids of, of, of the fallen, evil, wicked angels that followed Satan and women, and the women that uh, bred with them. And they use these verses to, to show that God is a wicked, evil SOB. And this is their terminology, not mine. Deuteronomy 2017. But thou shalt utterly destroy them. But thou shalt utterly destroy them. Namely, the Hittites and the Amorites and the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. Okay? Are you starting to get the idea? In Judges ver chapter 1, verse 4, And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew, or killed, and they slew of them in Bezek 10,000 men. Next verse. And they found Adon Bezek in Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. So, I hope you're getting the idea here. Now, people, if the Canaanites were just bad people, and they weren't these satanic hybrids, why didn't the Lord tell Israel, please send evangelists to these people and teach them the ways of the Lord. Teach them the Ten Commandments. Teach them to love me. 
he didn't send missionaries. He said, send them the sword. Right? I mean, um, I don't know. Okay. In Genesis 26, 34, and Esau was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, Judith, I'm sorry, Judith, the daughter of Ben Biri, the Hittite, and Bashimath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. So Esau married two Hittite women. Verse 35. Which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. So, let me prove to you that the Hittites and the Canaanites are related. All right, here we go. I found it. Um, Genesis 36.2 Esau took his wives of the daughter of Canaan, Adah, the daughter of Elon the Hittite, and Ah. Uh, a H O L I B A M A H, a holy Baba Bama, I don't know, the daughter of Anah, the daughter of Zibion, the Hivite. Okay? So Esau took his wives of the daughters of Canaan. All right? So. And Isaac and Rebekah were unhappy about it. All right? They were very, very unhappy about it. Matter of fact, Genesis 26, 35 says, Which were a grief of mine unto Isaac and to Rebekah. All right. So, let's see. Let's see what else we got here. All right, so... Rebecca had Isaac trick, uh, I'm sorry, Rebecca had Jacob go in to her husband, his father, Isaac, and trick him into giving him the blessing. You can read this in Genesis 27. I actually covered that in my previous Bible study on the election. And... Esau got all bent out of shape and wanted to kill Jacob. And Rebekah told Isaac, go to my father's house. Go to my father's people. You know, get out of here. Get out of Dodge. All right. All right. Genesis 27, 46. And Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. And those are the Canaanites, the Hittites. I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these, which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? See, Rebekah knew full well that Esau had polluted his bloodline with the children of the devil. And she wanted to make sure Isaac didn't do the same stupid mistake. Genesis 28, 1. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Okay. Arise, go to Padananaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's father brother. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people and give thee the blessing of Abraham to thee and to thy seed children and to thy seed with thee that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger which God gave unto Abraham. Okay. Um, Let's go to verse 20, uh, Genesis 28, verse 6 here. 
next, you know. And Esau saw that Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him away to Padanaram to take him a wife from thence. And as, and that as he blessed him, he gave him a charge saying, thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. And that Jacob obeyed his father and his mother and was gone to Padanaram. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael, okay, and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajoth, to be his wife. So Esau saw, married these Canaanite women, these Hittites, saw that it didn't please his father, so he went to Ishmael and took a wife from there. So Esau had at least three wives. But uh, he absolutely destroyed his bloodline. Okay? Absolutely destroyed his bloodline. All right, I hope that I've made my point that uh, Esau polluted his bloodline. If, you know, take a look at the playlist. Uh, like I say, The Angels That Sin is a four-hour study. I mean, to me, it proves without a doubt that the Canaanites were satanic seed line. All right, let's take a look at how uh, the writer, the author of Hebrews feels, the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, how they feel about, the Lord feels about uh, Esau. Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace with all men and holiness. See, that's something that's not preached now nowadays. Holiness. You know, I get really sad when I hear these people preach the uh, once saved, always saved, do a 30-second sinner's prayer, and then live any way you want, and you can go out and kill people and practice witchcraft and get drunk on a Friday night and take whores home and play with them all night, and, you know, then Saturday night do the same thing, and then on Sunday morning you show up at church and throw a few pennies in the collection plate and and the preacher's telling you, well, because you said that sinner's prayer, the Lord has to take you, put you in heaven. He, it doesn't matter what you do. doesn't matter how you live. The Lord has to accept you. But the Bible here says, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. You know, we should try to live a holy life. That's... We should try to the best of our ability. Um, will we be able to do it in the flesh? Absolutely not. But we should strive. All right. Follow peace with all men in holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright do you did you catch that Esau was called a fornicator but yet the Bible says he married those wives. Why would, if he was married, why is he called a fornicator? Uh, if you have wives and you cheat on your wife, you're called an adulterer. A fornicator is a single person. My opinion, 
He's called a fornicator because he should never have married those women in the first place. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Listen carefully. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Did you catch that? Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright, for ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Ooh. So Esau never repented. But he cried crocodile tears. Oh, boo-hoo! The Lord cheated me out of my birthright. Esau was rejected of the Lord. The, can, did you catch that? He was rejected. The Lord rejected Esau. Of course, Esau rejected the Lord. I guess it's a two-way street, huh? That doesn't sound good, does it? So what else does the Bible say about Esau? Turn your Bibles to Malachi chapter 1. Uh, I think it's verse 2. Now yeah, let's go to Malachi 1. 1-1. One, one. The burden of the word of the Lord to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, Wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. A man's heritage is his children, people. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Is he talking about dinosaurs or is he talking about the, you know, when you talk about the dragon in the Bible, especially in Revelation, you're talking about Satan. Listen next. Whereas Edom saith, Edom is Esau, remember? Verse 4. Whereas Edom saith, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. And they shall call them the border of wickedness, the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever the people against whom the lord hath indignation forever indignation means extreme hatred the people against whom the lord hath indignation forever that doesn't sound good the lord rejected esau esau rejected the lord the Lord says he hates Esau, and he calls them the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. I don't think I'd want to be Esau. Matter of fact, I'm glad I'm not Esau. All right, let's get to the meat. Turn to Obadiah 1.1. Obadiah is uh, the minor prophet's. They're called minor prophets because of their size, not because of the importance of the message. It's just before the New Testament. Obadiah 1.1. Boy, this is a powerful book. 
There's a lot of prophecy in the Minor Prophets, people. A lot. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. Remember Esau's Edom? Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Listen carefully. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, that thou dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? See, Esau lived up in the mountains, and uh, I believe they were the uh, the Petra, I'm not sure. Uh, but they lived in a place that was uh, very, very difficult to attack. So, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down to the ground? Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and, thou, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, Thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee, that they that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau? And thy mighty men, O T men, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. That every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Let me stop here. Um, when Israel came out of Egypt, Esau's descendants attacked Israel. You know, when they were trying to pass through their in the desert place, they attacked them. They actually attacked the rear. Now, I don't know if you know it, but when you're advancing as a group of people, who's in the rear? Usually it's the aged, the old people, the uh, the elderly, the uh, the sick, the lame, you know, they're usually in the back. And this is who Esau attacked, the weakest people. You know, here it is, these people, Esau, you know, Esau was Jacob's brother. And here it is, his brother's descendants are coming out of Egypt. And Esau attacked, Esau's children attacked them. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Okay, in verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Obadiah 1.11. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was one of them. Now this verse is talking about uh, when, when uh, Babylon took Jerusalem, 
Esau went in and, and helped. Okay, verse 12. But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of thy people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither, neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. In other words, when, when they were people, when Judah was trying to escape from the Babylonians, Esau cut them off and blocked the way, took them captive, and then gave them to the Babylonians. Verse 15, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. Listen carefully. Obadiah 1.18 And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. Joseph was one of the tribes of Israel, by the way, of the house of Jacob. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble. Stubble is something you burn. And the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. And they of the south shall possess the Mount of Esau, and they of the plain of the Philistines. And they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sarephrad, I don't know, shall possess the cities of the south. And Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. The house of Jacob and Joseph is going to be a flame. The house of Esau is going to be burned by stubble. When they talk about kindle, they're talking about starting a fire, people, and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. You want to know something? Josephus, a Jewish historian in the time of the Romans, um, he wrote a book of history, and I don't know where it's at, but he said that uh, King Herod, you know, the Herod, the King Herod and his family, that they were of the children of Esau, Edom. They were Edomites. I don't know if it was true. But remember King Herod, <coughs> excuse me, his family killed all the children in Bethlehem trying to kill Jesus. You know, um, in the Jewish Encyclopedia, 1925 edition, volume 5, page 1, uh, I'm sorry, page 41, it says that Edom is in modern Jewry today. Edom is in modern Jewry today. Don't we read in Revelation 2.9? I know the blasphemy, the blasphemy, Jesus saying this, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. 
you know, the Lord's going to wipe Esau and his children from off the face of the earth one day. But that day hasn't happened yet. Turn to Genesis 27. Um, verse 37. Isaac blessed Jacob Israel. And in Genesis 27, 37, you know, Esau is coming to him and asking for a blessing. And Isaac answered and said unto Esau, Behold, I have made him thy Lord, speaking of Jacob, and all his brethren have I given to him for servants, and with corn and wine have I sustained him. And what shall I do now unto thee, my son? So, Jacob was to be master over Esau, and Isaac blessed him with corn and wine. That's basically symbolic of food and grapes, okay? Now, if the European Christians are indeed the children of Israel, don't we indeed, haven't we indeed been blessed with the best crop growing areas in the world? Do you know that the Ukraine in Europe, um, that's called the breadbasket of Europe. That's where they grow all the wheat, the rye, the barley. That's why the Russians and the Germans have fought over that piece of territory for hundreds of years. That is, that's like the Midwest in the United States. Uh, you start talking about Nebraska. Um, let's see what I'm trying to think. Nebraska and um, I can't think of the other places. Yeah, Kansas, Nebraska, you know. Uh, there were times when America was a lot more full of Christians than it is today that America fed half the world. I mean, Illinois used to just grow so much corn. And, uh, you know, we grew wheat, barley, rye, just, you know, the, 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 let's face it, people, the white European Christian, uh, well, we're post-Christian now, but we grew so much food, we fed most of the world. I mean, every time a country had a crop failure, we would run in and feed them, you know, but uh, America's not, America's not being blessed anymore. We are certainly not being blessed anymore, but Isaac blessed Jacob Israel with corn and wine. Okay, so in Genesis 27, 37, it says, And with corn and wine have I sustained him, and what shall I do now unto thee, my son? And Esau said unto his father, Hast thou but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. And Esau his father answered and said unto him, Behold, Thy dwelling shall be in the fatness of the earth. In other words, where they have lots of food. And of the dew of heaven from above. And by thy sword shalt thou live. So Esau is going to be a man of war. And by thy sword thou shalt live and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass when thou shalt have the dominion that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. So, there's going to come a day when Esau would have dominion and the rule and break the yoke 
from off his neck. In other words, he would become the ruler over Jacob Israel. Edom is in modern Jewry today. You know, are the bankers the descendants of Esau? Because they are certainly our rulers. You know, the wealth of a people is the food that they can grow. But the farmers don't own the land. The banks do. You know, there's family farms is almost completely gone. It's all corporate farms now, people. You know, back in the 20s and the 30s, almost the entire United States was family farms. Now it's all corporate farms. They have driven the family farmers out of business. The corporations don't pay tax, but the family farmers have to pay every penny. Um, and people don't know it, but the Department of Agriculture sets the price on the crops and tells the farmers how much they're going to get paid for their crops. Can you believe that? So if the farm, if the Department of Agriculture says you're only going to get 27 cents for a pound of wheat, that's what you get. I uh, remember, let's see, in the 1980s, I was in regular college, secular college, what is called uh, Palm Beach State College today. And my accounting teacher came to school and he actually held a loaf of bread up. And a loaf of bread back then was like a dollar something. I don't remember exactly how much, like a dollar, dollar fifty, dollar and a quarter, something like that. He held up a loaf of bread. He goes, um, this loaf of bread has 100 different taxes on it. Uh, the truck that delivered this bread paid tax. The diesel that the truck bought paid tax. The tractor that did the wheat, you know, that plowed the ground, that the reaper, the combine, tax, tax, tax. The land paid tax. The farmer paid income tax. Um, this tax, that tax, you know, just ta he, he, there was over a hundred different taxes. And then he says, on this loaf of bread that costs a dollar, dollar fifty, whatever. How much do you think the farmer got for this wheat that he grew for this dollar fifty loaf of bread? Do you know that was less than a nickel? On a dollar fifty loaf of bread, the farmer made less than a nickel. So guess what? The farmer went out of business. And of course, the bank foreclosed or took the land, you know, because if you don't make enough money to pay your property taxes, the state owns the land and then the state would sell it to the corporate farmers. So guess what? The banks and the corporate farms have bought all the wheat. And by the way, people, China just recently surpassed the United States as the largest economy in the world because a factory in China pays no tax, but a factory in the United States has to pay tax. That's why it's called free trade. You have your factory in China, you don't pay any uh, tax. But if you have your farmer in the United, uh, your factory in the United States, you have to pay tax. Uh, United States, you have to pay a uh, minimum wage. China, they can pay them 12 cents an hour. That's what tariffs were, people. So all the factories, I think it's like um, seven-eighths of all the factories from 30-something years ago are gone. Seven-eighths of all the factories that were in the United States are gone. You ever wonder why the economy is so bad? America's under judgment, people. Um, you ever wonder why you get out of college, you can't find a job? America's under judgment, people. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. Well, China, the largest economy in the world, has just has been purchasing farmland in the United States. And I tell you what, there's going to come a day 
when we're going to go hungry and the Chinese are going to sell us our own wheat. The Chinese are going to sell us our own wheat or even worse, when we're starving, send our wheat over to China to feed them. So, I don't know. Well, now you know why the Lord says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. So, all right, well, I hope you learned something. And like I say, I've got a playlist. If you want to learn about the Canaanites and the giants and the Philistines and the sons of God, the daughters of men, Genesis 6, the, you know, the sin of the angels, please see my playlist. Um, uh, it's not my work. It was the work of the founder of the Denver Bible Institute, um, Bible College. Um, matter of fact, let me get you his name. Yeah, I read the book, uh, The Angels That Sin by Clifton Fowler, F-O-W-L-E-R. I read his book. It's in the public domain. It was written back, I think, in the 20s. He's, uh, he's a really good Bible scholar. He was a, he was a real deal. Sadly, all the Bible colleges now are more worried about, uh, how to keep the flock happy and paying tithes more than they are preaching the words of God. And uh, you'll notice I don't beg for money and I don't do this for money and I don't accept donations. So I've got a job and uh, the Lord provides and uh, that's it. The Lord provides. So, all right, well, I've been ranting and raving for well over an hour now and now you know why God hated Esau. He had God, God, Esau hated God, and God was, I guess you could say, just returning the favor, so to speak. But uh, you know what? God chose Jacob, and God rejected Esau. All right, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. I hope you learned something. All blessing, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ, who's of the seed of David, of the line of Judah, of Jacob, of Isaac, of Abraham, through Adam. And in Jesus' precious name, Amen.